During the holidays, if everything goes well, I can I would hope to sleep for a few hours a day, like two or three hours. But unfortunately, if anything goes wrong, like a machine needs maintenance or something, basically I have two hours to fix it. It's the only way because this mochi has to be made fresh. We make it during the night so we can get to uh, our customers in the, in the morning. My name is Brian Quito and I'm owner of Fugetsuto Confectionery. We're at uh, my store at 315 East 1st Street. This is the oldest business in Little Tokyo. Fugetsuto has been in business since 1903 and so currently we're at 116 going on 117 years. Our specialty is making mochi. We make some very traditional mochi uh, with sweet bean paste and we make some contemporary snack food type mochis and we also make more artisan style the things that we've created in our shop over the last few years well my grandfather started the store in 1903 and my my father took over the store after world war ii after they came out of camps and i took over the store in 1980 officially 1986. this is my son corey he's actually going to represent the fourth generation of this store. He's been training now for a year and a half while he's going to school and uh, we'll hopefully get him educated and then over to Japan to study some and then he'll be back to take over the store. Talk about a little pressure. Yeah, I mean, there might be a little pressure on him. Between Christmas and New Year's, we are the biggest producer of uh, Japanese mochi. We will probably end up making about maybe 30,000 pounds of mochi between now and New Year's. It's kind of like, like non-stop, just like you rush trying to fill the orders. A lot of sleep deprivation, for sure, for everyone. But uh, it's, it's nice to see a lot of old customers and a lot of family in New Year's time. I guess if I had to guess why our store is so important to Little Tokyo is, you know, we have a very clear customer base and that we draw customers to the area. A lot of people that come in here, they come in here first time as children. And, and you, normally they're gonna come in with their grandparents. And so um, it doesn't only just, it's a candy store, but it also creates a, you know, those memories of having something sweet, having something with grandma, grandpa. And it's been going on for 116 years. You know, it just keeps building on itself and it's part of the culture. And I'm really happy that it is still, still here actually. Who would think that you would have a little small little mom and pop candy store that would survive, you know, the, Great Depression, World War II, and all these things, and still stay alive and still uh, pumping here at doing business after over 100 years.